moving on to the biggest issue of the week, which is not just the record rainfall along the East Coast, which has battered Queensland and New South Wales, but it's the fallout from what many of these locals in those regional areas claim has been a lack of government action, both during the flooding and afterwards. Now, whether locals truly understand who's in charge of what is a crucial question in this, and I doubt whether many of them are pointing their fingers in the right direction. Yesterday, the floods came for Sydney. Flood-prone areas along the Hawkesbury River in the city's northwest were hit again, but metropolitan Sydney was hit hardest. From Marrickville to Manly, Sydney streets just couldn't cope with the torrential rain. There certainly hasn't been the same kind of backlash from Sydney siders. Now, the PM today declared the floods a, as a catastrophic national emergency, freeing up funds and assistance and cutting red tape entirely. It's the same kind of legislative power used in response to the 2019-2020 Black Summer bushfires. Which brings me to my next guest, to someone who became nationally familiar during those bushfires, former New South Wales Rural Fire Service Chief, now the New South Wales Resilience Commissioner, Shane Fitzsimmons. Now, as flood victims seek to lay blame during this flood crisis, it's been the Commissioner and his agency which has also come in for criticism. Questions have been asked such as, why hasn't a resilience body been able to better prepare cities like Lismore for these floods? And what does the resilience team do with its $1.4 billion mm. budget? So, joining me now is the New South Wales Resilience Commissioner himself, Shane Fitzsimmons. Shane, thank you very much for agreeing to come onto the program. No problem at all. Good afternoon, Chris. Now, do you take any responsibility for places like Lismore being less able to mitigate these floods? Shouldn't that be the role of a resilience commissioner? You need to explain to us what you are there for. So thanks, Chris. And, and let, let's be clear, there, there, is, there is an agency called Resilience which was established after the, after the awful season of the bushfires in 2019-20. We had an unprecedented fire season and we knew we would have an unprecedented level of damage and destruction uh, resulting in the largest recovery effort from a disaster that the state had ever experienced. So that was absolutely a primary focus in establishing the agency. We lifted out of the old Department of Community and Justice, uh, the old department and entities that were there looking after those sorts of roles, and we focused it into a new uh, standalone organisation. The government also identified that key going forward in the years ahead was how do we make sure we start identifying better what the state's vulnerabilities or susceptibilities are, how do we look at programs and investments particularly in, 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 in improving the resilience or, or hardening up prevention and mitigation uh, arrangements, everything from awareness programs right through to investment in so infrastructure. So what work was or, done in reference or, or, to Lismore? If that's the case, if that's your job, what work was done in reference to Lismore before the, the, the floods last week? So, so in fairness, Chris, uh, we're, we're, we're not even two years old. As I say, the focus has been absolutely uh, on the bushfire recovery. In that same intervening period, uh, we've had significant storms and floods. We've had multiple variants of COVID, uh, one of the largest floods on record uh, only 12 months ago, uh, resulting in a scale of damage and destruction in some areas, particularly around mid-north coast of New South Wales, that they'd never seen before. So we have absolutely been focused uh, on ongoing disaster response and recovery arrangements. We have been charged with the government and we're expecting to put the first iteration uh, of a state resilience strategy for the government in the middle of this year. Investments in, in, in resilience building don't happen overnight. You don't flick a switch and suddenly you've got entire regions and entire communities able to withstand uh, record-breaking flood events, sure, record-breaking flood you events need, Shane, that don't weren't, you need that weren't to be in the front. Don't you need to be in the front line now as Resilience Commissioner in working out where you rebuild the main drag of Lismore? Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of our statutory roles, Chris, uh, is leading recovery after disasters and as has been identified with the lessons of the last 12 months and particularly here now in Lismore, we know... Uh, that there's this immediacy of priority, of support and assistance to so many thousands of displaced people and all the infrastructure and everything around there that's been damaged. The, the disaster happened in a matter of hours and days, but the recovery is going to go for days, weeks, months and years. There is already discussion going on with the local council and the local communities about rebuilding, about what, what it looks like, how do we build back better and wiser, knowing 
that places like Lismore are in flood-prone areas. Yep. Uh, it's flooded over and over again, but we've seen record-breaking flood this time, like no one has ever experienced before. So we do have to look ahead and say to ourselves, how do we get smarter? How do we get wiser in communities like Lismore? And there are plenty of Lismores around New South Wales. But I'm also mindful, Chris, that, that particularly through the Commonwealth and through the state, there is, there is a want to see going forward. And the Commonwealth Government established a new agency only months after ours called National Recovery and Resilience Agency. There is absolutely shared commitment at different levels of government to start looking at what the communities are that are most vulnerable to natural hazards and other hazards. And how do we start shifting the dial on investing in things like mitigation programs, like levy banks? I don't think you could build a levy bank big enough no. around Lismore uh, to impede the impacts of what happened. But they're the sorts of things we need to think about. We need to think about relocating key aspects of communities and business, potentially. So there is absolutely a commitment to shift the dial, not just in the hundreds of millions and indeed billions of dollars that are going into recovery and rebuilding, but we've got to rebuild and plan for the future smarter. How do we give certainty and confidence that we're doing what we can to prevent or mitigate these sorts of things happening to communities into the future? Can no I matter ask you where this? they are across can the state. Can I ask you this? Yesterday afternoon, uh, I saw that the New South Wales government appointed Mal Lanyon as the Northern New South Wales Flood Recovery Coordinator. Now, I would have thought instantly that a guy like Shane Fitzsimmons would have been perfect for that role. Should you have been asked to do that? Is that the job of the resilience agency that you've got? Or am I off the, off the dial on that? No, 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 you're spot on, Chris. And, and it is disappointing that there's, there's a lot of noise and confusion about the arrangements. But under statutory provisions in this state, I am the state emergency recovery controller. I appointed Mal Lanyon to be my agent as the regional recovery coordinator in northern New South Wales to be the person on the ground, the person at the coalface, connecting in with all those local councils and general managers, right. all those local communities. So we've got a very high profile focus point working with my team that are now based regionally. None of them were there before this new agency was started. Yep. So our team's been up there proactively working with council. Mal comes in with an extraordinary amount of experience and connectedness across government that can work with me reporting up to our minister and reporting to the Premier and the crisis policy cabinet uh, of government to ensure that we understand and hear firsthand what the local priority uh, needs are what the nuances and, 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 and individual uh, challenges are that might be, and how do we work with Mal and how do we work with me to make sure that we're pulling together the full weight of government and non-government resources together to do the things that are needed in northern New South Wales. You've cleared uh, we're up already a hell seeing... of a lot. You've, I've got run out of time, but yeah, you've okay. cleared up a hell of a lot, and I think a lot of people, especially in those flood-prone areas, are going to be pleased about what they're hearing. Shane Fitzsimmons, thank you very much for your time.